How's it going guys? Welcome back to Dip Discovery. Now today I'm doing a review of my new bike. This is the Ducati X Diavel S. So let's get straight into it and see what I think of it. So the first thing first, let's have a look at the design of the X Diavel S. Now I think this is the main thing that stands out about the X Diavel S is how absolutely amazing it looks. I mean, even if you're not into bikes, you can look at this thing, you know it's something special. Um, so compared to this thing, you'd be looking at the, probably the new Harley Davidson Sportster S, which is quite similar kind of profiles, going for that cruiser sport kind of uh, niche. You've also got the new Triumph Rocket 3. You've also got the uh, Yamaha VMAX. There used to be the Suzuki Beaking, which probably was a bit similar, but obviously they don't make that anymore. So yeah, it is filling its own niche. It's one of the first, only Ducatis you can get with the first front forward uh, foot position which if you sit on it kind of sits about kind of like there um, and I'm not gonna lie going from like upright kind of uh, or like hunched over kind of sport bikes and sports tourers to a foot feet forward position it is a bit of a, a weird uh, experience um, and you have to get used to it now obviously the main standout features is the uh, single sided swing arm with a huge um, uh, Diablo Rosso uh, tire on it and also the amazing diamond cut alloy wheel um, which you can see there and it looks absolutely amazing and it looks like something like Batman would ride um, and you get a lot of head turns uh, from that rear wheel now if you uh, look closely it's actually made by Enki um, who actually pr provide the alloys for this thing so it's a really quality wheel now if you look down here have a look at all this kind of really cool like engine uh, uh, components you've got the um, you know this again this diamond cut uh, engine covers um, you've also got the uh, uh, exhaust with the side firing and they're all kind of like firing up like that and it, it's, it looks really cool something you don't really see you know on most uh, kind of cruiser kind of bikes um, whereas they're, they're not like rear firing um, you also can adjust the uh, the front four pegs uh, three positions so you can have it at the back middle or front there as well which is pretty cool so that's all fully adjustable you, they do actually do a conversion kit which allows you to put the uh, the foot pegs uh, in mid mount position if you really wanted to but to be honest when I looked into it um, it kind of ruins the aesthetic of the bike they kind of designed it with the feet forward position um, and having the feet you know in the rear mid position it looks a bit odd to me um, and to be honest if you don't like it at first I'd say stick with it because you do get used to it and once you get used to it it feels absolutely brilliant so look on the other side so on the business side of the bike obviously you've got all your single sided swing arm kind of stuff going on here the really cool thing about it is as well is it's belt driven it's actually got carbon fiber weave through it because it produces so much torque and um, they need that carbon fiber weave belt drive to make it stronger and deliver all that power to the, the rear tire. Um, so that's really nice and it's really low maintenance as well. So <laughs> I'm a kind of convert from going from chain bikes to going to belt driven, it's really cool. I'm a bit annoyed that this comes in like a bright yellow, the suspension spring. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I would have preferred it maybe like, uh, maybe black, white or even uh, red to go with the kind of Ducati theme, but yellow, yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Um, obviously, again, the real cool styling with the uh, engine is uh, beautifully kind of displayed here. And as long as you keep on top of it and keep it clean, it always looks really nice. And obviously, again, with the three kind of stage uh, positioning on where you kind of want your front foot peg. This isn't standard, this is something I put on because uh, the Ducati XD Avales has literally zero storage underneath the seat um, and anywhere else on the bike so if i lift the seat up here you can see there's obviously zero room here to kind of put anything yeah you can't even fit like a credit card in there and even if you want to route some cables it makes it quite difficult because there's not much room to kind of play around with so that's something to bear in mind so because of that i have gone for this uh, trip machine uh, lock bag which is a small bag that kind of bolts onto the frame here well not bolts on but straps onto the frame and then it gives you a bit more extra luggage space um, I've put a link in the description if you want to check it out. I've actually done a review of that, so if you want to check that out, um, you can have a look at the uh, at the link. Um, and yeah, it's uh, you know it's an absolutely beautiful design. 
Um, let's move on to the front end as well. So the front of the bike, you've got this really nice kind of single unit uh, headlamp. And the cool thing about it is it's wrapped around with this daytime rolling light and it's a full LED unit as well. There's no bulbs in there. Um, and you also have the dip beam and the high beam as an LED unit. And you know what, uh, driving at night or riding at night, it prov provides a really nice, white, bright, um, vibrant light. And it really illuminates the road and helps you get seen as well. And I think it works really well. So if I just turn it on, you can see what it kind of looks like. Hang on. There you go. So that's the, um, the uh, side light there, uh, the uh, daytime running light. And it's got kind of two kind of modes. So if you've got it set in that mode, um, which is just the daytime running light, and it's actually got a sensor in it, which um, automatically puts it to the right mode for you. So if, you're, if you roll it out in the middle of the day, it'll automatically put it on daytime running light mode. And then if the lights, uh, obviously if the sun goes down and it gets a bit darker, then it'll automatically dim that um, and it'll put the headlamp on as well. So uh, if you want to see what it looks like with the headlamp on, that's what it kind of looks like there. And then the center of it gets illuminated instead and the daytime running light gets uh, dimmed. And then if you want to change it back to the daytime running light, you just press that button again and you're back to the daytime running light. Now, one of the things that most people really like about the XD Avales is this absolutely beautiful uh, one-piece machined uh, metal fuel tank as well. And it looks absolutely amazing. I love that. And it's not, you know, it's not covered in plastic or anything like that. It's a metal kind of a fuel tank. So you, you do kind of need to be careful whether you don't like nick it or anything like that or damage it because it's not a cheap item to replace because I think the fuel tank alone is about three, four grand, something like that. So obviously no cheap uh, thing by uh, any imagination, but it looks absolutely beautiful. And when you've kind of cleaned up and polished it, you know, the whole kind of line, sweeping line there as it kind of goes, you know, from the front tank to the seat, it's a really nice, uh, you know, elegant kind of stance on the road. Um, and obviously the machining you get here with this kind of uh, framework, you know, the, I think it's called a trellis frame that they've got there is really cool. So that moves me on to the engine, which is uh, it's a 1260 uh, Testa Treta is what they call it, the uh, Italians. Uh, it's, the, they, it's meant to be a V2, but they actually call it an L-twin. Um, so obviously an L kind of configuration um, there, and it produces around 160 horsepower um, it's a really potent engine but we're going to get more into the kind of performance of it when we do the ride out now the xd Avel s which is this model which comes with uh, a the seat backrest here for a pillion passenger that actually comes included with the s model on the standard version you don't get that but you can buy it separately and it's just a bolt-on upgrade um, which you can kind of remove and put back on um, using if you just remove kind of four bolts it's quite easy to do um, without it to be honest um, you'd have to be a brave passenger to come on the back of that because you've only got this much tiny about <laughs> amount of seat here before your butt falls off and you end up on this big ass rear tire. So um, you definitely need that if you're carrying a pillion, that's something to bear in mind. Now for the suspension setup, we've got a, uh, it's got like a four pot uh, Brembo uh, calipers on each side and it's got absolutely bags of stopping power on the front brake, it's absolutely amazing. The rear brake, not so much, and we're gonna go into a few kind of issues that you can expect to have with your rear brake, which is quite common with the XD Avales, but I'll go into that when we're on the ride out, but the front brakes are the Brembo ones, uh, dual discs, and they uh, work absolutely brilliantly. So this will be your handlebar set up, and you know what, for someone like me, who's actually quite short, it is actually quite uh, comfortable um, and it's easy to reach. Uh, they do actually do two more types of bars if you want to spec it out instead and have the bars a bit further out or a bit closer to you. They actually do have that option which you can buy by itself but for me to be honest it works all right. Maybe if you were going out for a really really long ride then you'd want the bars a bit closer um, you know because you'd be a bit more upright a little bit less hunched over. That's something to bear in mind. But um, yeah, the, uh, it doesn't come with any heated grips as standard, but you can opt to have them afterwards. Um, obviously you've got your, your bar ends there. Um, what's really cool that you don't find on a lot of bikes is all your switch kind of gears are illuminated as well. So they've got a nice red kind of glow around them. So, you know, at, at night when you're riding, they kind of stand out a bit more. You can actually read what they say, which is really, really cool. Um, now here, I've, this is obviously 
not a standard part. This is my quad lock where I actually put my phone mount. So that's something to bear in mind as well. If you want to mount a phone, you can easily do that. Just get yourself a quad block mount or a, uh, what's it called? A uh, RAM mount, something like that. Um, so let's have a look at the, uh, the infotainment. So here we have the infotainment. So if you want to unlock it, you just press the unlock button on your, uh, uh, you know, your handlebar there, and then it boots up and you get the Ducati logo which looks really, really smart. Now, um, obviously you've got the uh, two screens here. You've got one at the top um, and one at the bottom. And the, uh, the top one is just more like kind of your indicators, like your, your, you know, your, what your headlights are doing. If you're running out of fuel, uh, engine problems, that kind of stuff will tell you there. But obviously your main piece is this little screen here, um, which has got loads of different modes. So if you, I'll to show you the, this is the standard one that I've got set up now. Now it does actually have Bluetooth as well, so you can connect your phone to it and you can see um, who's calling you, um, if you, uh, you know, or what, phone, uh, what music track you're playing if you've got a compatible headset like the Senna uh, 20S, which I kind of use it with. Um, and you can see all that on the screen here. You can actually, uh, you can't see it now because I'm not going to run in, but when you have someone ringing you, it'll flash there with their name and you can answer the call and stuff or you can drop the call or you can change track and all that kind of stuff all through the screen so that's something that's quite cool but to be honest but when I found uh, I set it up so what you have to do is basically you connect the phone to the uh, screen uh, to the Ducati and you connect the uh, headset your center or whatever one you're using to the Ducati and then it's controlled that way but to be honest, I found it a bit buggy and it was just easier to kind of just have the phone connected to the, the Ducati, but the actual uh, uh, Senna connected to the, to the phone instead of both connected to it. And it just kind of worked a bit better because it was a bit funny because you lost some of the functionality on the, uh, the Senna by having them both connected to their like Google Assistant, for example. So that's something you might want to bear in mind. But aside from that, this is what you get. So um, you control it using your handlebar um, side kind of switches where you up and down and your menu to enter and then if you press up changes your range you know how many miles you've done all that kind of stuff then your bottom uh, button uh, controls the bottom screen there um, and then if you want to press and hold it uh, the enter button you get into your settings menu which kind of tells you your uh, what uh, if you want to change your riding mode the info mode so here you can go through uh, you know track um, full or city and what that does is it actually changes how the uh, screen looks so obviously this one being a track focus it's more on the rpm um, and it's kind of the other kind of settings like your fuel gauge and all that kind of stuff is taking a bit of a back seat city and then this is obviously more focused around what you kind of need to know in a city riding environment you know which is mainly kind of your speeds you know it caught up her speed cameras are nice and big there but you lose your rpm gauge and obviously you've got your neutral which changes when you change gear or your time and all that kind of stuff so that's really nice and cool and you've got full which is the one that i had originally and that tells you everything in one kind of screenshot there but obviously it's a bit more cramped um if you press the menu enter button once, you can change your driving mode. So you've got sport, touring, and urban. So what the differences are, obviously you've got 160 odd brake horsepower in the bike. Um, what If you press it once, um, the sport mode, what that does is, to, is it changes some of the settings. So you get your engine um, is set to the full uh, power of the bike. So that's 160 brake horsepower. And you also get dynamic traction control um, set to two and your ABS set to two as well. And your throttle response is a lot tighter on the uh, sport mode. Um, and it's really, really quick and it you know, kicks your ass basically. And then if you go on to touring, again, you get the full 160 brake horsepower. But the difference is your dynamic traction control is set to four and your ABS is set to three. So it's a bit more manageable and the throttle response isn't quite as um, immediate um, it's a bit more smooth um, so it's a bit more relaxing when you're doing long miles and then the last one you've got is urban so what that does is actually really limits the uh, horsepower of the bike to 100 brake horsepower dynamic track control 6 and the ABS on 3 and it makes it a hell of a lot more manageable when you're just kind of weaving in and out of tight roads in the city and all that kind of stuff um, so yeah um, obviously kind of depending on where you are what, what you kind of use that for you've also got a lap timer as well if you want to uh, you know do your lap times if you're on a track you can uh, have a pin code for the bike, so if you've not got the uh, the key on you, um, you know you can you still uh, enter the bike without um, using a key if you enter the pin code. Um, then you've got your DRL controls there. Um, you can just have it set to auto. 
So that's your daytime running light. Um, I've got it set to auto. Um, and then you've got your backlight, you know, change the brightness. It's all kind of pretty standard stuff after this, you know, date set, clock set, all that kind of stuff. So that's all there for you to sort out. So that's pretty much the uh, infotainment of the thing. Um, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention as well is the key itself, um, as it's in my pocket here, which is that. Um, the key itself is actually keyless. Um, it's got a key in there which you can use to open up the fuel tank, but you don't actually need the key to uh, turn on the bike. You just kind of sit on it and in close proximity of it, and then once you press the uh, on button on the bike, it'll automatically fire up. Now one thing I will mention if you are thinking about getting one of these is get yourself an Optimate Ducati battery ch uh, charger tender thing because what I found with this bike is it actually, uh, the battery on it when it's sat idle will probably last maybe 10, 12 days, two weeks before it starts struggling to actually start. So that's why I bought one, one of myself, one of these uh, battery tenders which I did a review of as well, which you can have a look in the video. Um, and it, I'll just leave it on trickle charge. You know, it's quick to easily plug in because you've already got an SAE connection at the bottom of the, of the actual, uh, underneath the seat. And it keeps the battery from dying. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know if it may be because it's a, a 2018 model and the battery's a bit old now. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really last that long. Alright guys, so I'm going to take the bike out for a spin now. I'm going to tell you the thoughts of what I've had over this bike for a whole year of having it and tell you what you need to know. Okay, so here we are on the road and I think the first thing we need to address is what kind of person is this bike aimed for? Now, <coughs> um, as I mentioned earlier, your, your competitors for this kind of bike, you'd be looking at the Ducati Sportster S, uh, not Ducati, sorry, the Harley Davidson Sportster S, which is a, a new competitor to the Ducati uh, Dial X Diavel. Um, you've also got the Yamaha V Max, so these are like kind of muscle cruiser bikes um, that, uh, you know, may appeal to the same kind of buyer. Now, Ducati, obviously, normally when you think Ducati, you think the super sport stuff like the Panigale or maybe the. Um, uh, the uh, touring one, um, what's it called now, the Multistrada, um, but obviously, you know, they're kind of aimed around people that like that kind of style of bike, you know, wear the full levers or wear the textile kind of outfit. Now, it's clear to see the Diavel, um, X Diavel marketing that you see with it, they kind of go for a different kind of crowd, um, it's more um, style oriented, lifestyle oriented, that kind of maybe that cafe racer market where you know you like to throw on some riding jeans leather jacket you know uh ride out into a city and look like a baller that's what the kind of uh, market they're going for does it succeed in that market well a hundred percent i'd probably say yeah because it's one of the most coolest bikes on the road hands down like you don't need to uh, know anything about motorbikes to be able to appreciate this bike um and that's, I think, what uh, uh, the uh, Diavel does so well. Like, it's a head turner. Like, you know, I've had many uh, Japanese bikes and, you know, people like them, but they don't turn and look at them the same way that they do an X Diavel. It's like riding a, driving a Ferrari. That's what you're basically getting here. Now, on the flip side of that, it costs a lot of money. Now, you don't buy a Ducati if you're worried about the pennies. Let me tell you that thing because this bike is expensive you're looking at brand new uh, for the S model you're looking at 21 grand something like that 22 grand um, brand new um, second hand um, you'd be lucky to find one around 16 grand with low mileage um, so it all depends on how the mileage you're kind of getting on for but they do hold the value a bit after that 16 grand mark so um, you've got to have deep pockets and that also includes the running cost so the running cost of this thing if you're going for a full service, um, you're looking at around, let's say, I think it cost me for a full service about £280. That's three hours worth of labour at £75, plus obviously your oil and your parts and stuff like that. So you're looking at £280 to £300 uh, for an annual service, so that's expensive. But it's Ducati, what do you expect? Okay? And then every other part that you want for the bike, you want the aftermarket parts, Ducati parts are expensive as well. Now, as well as your service, you got to, you'll probably encounter two issues with the bike that are quite common and can be quite annoying. The first one is the fuel sender. Now the motorcycle's fuel sender um, 
is well known and is a common fault to go faulty and it'll just report that you're on reserve tank and empty tank all the time. It's quite a common fault um, that do, even Ducati know about and it just happens. The fuel sender shit, it breaks. And you have to end up taking it back to Ducati, buying a new fuel sender, getting them to fit it for £185. So that's something else to bear in mind. Now, if you don't believe me, go on forums. There's lots of people have this issue. Uh, just type in Ducati Diavel fuel sender fault problems and there's loads. So that's happened to me, £185 to fix that. The next thing you're going to have um, is the rear brake, which is a bit more serious. The rear brake is non-existent. Like, some, like when you get it brand new, it'll be fine. But after you've had it for a year or so, what have you, um, the, year, uh, the rear brake will start to soften and eventually it'll come to the point where it hardly does anything. So, I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world on a motorbike because you can, it depends on how good you are with your front brake. But if you do a lot of city riding, it can be very annoying because obviously you rely on your rear brake a lot more at slow speeds. Um, so what happened there is Ducati in America, from what I've seen, they did a big recall on a lot of uh, Diavels and um, <coughs> they replaced the uh, rear brake lines for them and then the uh, issue was sorted for them. However, from what I know, as far as I'm, I know, um, they didn't do that for every country um, and it's happened to me, so when I took my bike in last for a service, the rear brake was non-existent, I told them to have a look at it. They did, and then they said they bled it, you know, uh, redid the, uh, refilled the brake, uh, rear brake and all that kind of, did a rear brake service basically, part of the, of the, of the service, um, which, uh, you know, fixed the problem for then. Um, and then the guy said to me, like, look, uh, if it happens again and you have your rear brake, because it's quite a common issue on the XD Avils, um, let us know and as a gesture of goodwill Ducati may replace the rear brake lines for you because it can happen quite often so that's what my Gary said to me so that's something you might, you need, might need to bear in mind because that can be quite an issue now those things aside um, which are probably the, the two main bad things about this bike what you're getting for all that cheddar and those two pay in the asses. Well, let me tell you what you are getting. You're getting one of the coolest fucking bikes in the road. I'll tell you that right now. Um, it's it, like the feeling you get when you ride this bike. It's uh, something that you'll never get with um, other bikes. Like, you know, like Jack bikes or what have you. You feel like Batman riding this bike. And that's, uh, to me, that's worth his weight in gold. Um, because I love Batman. Um, but yeah, no, like, I, I went on a Ducati taste today and I rode the Super Sport S, uh, I rode the Panigale and all that kind of stuff, and you know, I really quite liked the Super Sport, and then, I, and then the guy goes, do you want to have a go on the Diavel? I was like, to be honest, I wasn't that into it, because, at the time, because I wasn't really liked cruisers, I wasn't a cruiser guy, but then when you rode it, you're like, whoa, now this, this is something special, and that's what the, th the Diavel does well. It is something special, it's a head turner, it's like driving a Ferrari, um, you, you know, uh, that's what you get from riding the Diavel and the character of the engine of that um, 1260 uh, Elton Twister Shredder is just, it, it's something that I've never experienced before because I've always uh, driven, ridden inline fours um, other than the, uh, obviously the Panigale that I rode. Um, <coughs> But the uh, the engine is just it's just hypnotic. That's the only word I can use to describe it. Like it's got so much character. Like when you pull that throttle back and you get that roar and the, it just kind of eats away at the engine and the air and the sound and the rumble. It's just uh, incredible. Um, it's a, it's like an electric kind of feeling with the. Uh, the, the engine that you get in this thing so it is a, a hard thing to kind of describe unless you're ridden one you feel like yeah when you twist the throttle you feel like you were just summoned Armageddon and everything dis is destroyed in the wake uh, <laughs> of your presence that's what it feels like to ride an XD Avil alright so and that's uh, why I love this thing 
Um, handling handles uh, surprisingly well for uh, uh, a cruiser. You've got the free forward position, but you can throw this thing in corners at speed and it'll stick to the ground. Like, um, like it looks, when you first sit on it without speed and like you just turn around in the showroom, you might feel like, uh, you know what, this, uh, this might not handle that well, but let me tell you, until you actually get on it and start riding it, don't make any assumptions. Um, because the bike handles really, really well. Um, like you can keep up with, you know, sport bikes and stuff as long as you're uh, decent at riding your bike anyway. So don't let that pull you off. Um, the feet forward position, it is hard to get used to at the start if you're not used to cruises, 100%. But let me tell you one thing, you get, you do get used to it. So persevere because you do get used to it and once you have got used to it it doesn't bother you and you know what I think if it had mid mount foot pegs um, I'd, I don't think the uh, um, aesthetics of the bike would suit because the um, it looks so much nicer with the uh, feet forward foot pegs in my position when you're on it um, it suits the style of the bike now I'm just going to pull over here so I can uh, just get changed into my waterproof overalls because I think it's going to start raining. Okay, so just put the uh, good old waterproof pants on and that's why I kind of recommend having uh, this bag here to carry these, uh, you know, your, your essentials in because you ain't going to fit them in the bike. So, yeah, um, what can I do to wrap it up? The bike, absolutely brilliant. What I've not ch tried yet is the Ducati Power Launch, which is this button here. Um, and basically what that does is you press it and then it tells you to put it in first gear, open full throttle, slowly release the first gear and it'll send you absolutely like bonkers in uh, a straight line. Um, and it, uh, without the front end lifting, it'll control all that. So it's basically like a, it's not a full launch control, but I say it's assisted launch control. And then it kind of knocks itself off at about 120 kilometers an hour, or maybe like, I don't know what that is in like miles per hour, what is it, I don't know, 100 mile an hour, something like that. And then, um, but you have to shift up uh, as well by yourself because the bike hasn't got a quick shifter, which is one thing that I would probably like to see on the XDLS as an option because it is an option for the normal Diablo but not on the XDLS which is a bit annoying um, but uh, yeah it would be good if it had that um, what else uh, so I've not tried that out because I'm too scared to be honest because I've not had it long enough and it still scares me the uh, current power that it's already generated it's got bags of power like it, it'll pull like an absolute train um, and anything in a straight line you kind of you you're gonna you're gonna absolutely dominate. Not 60. I think is like 2.6 2.8 seconds depending on how brave you are with that Ducati launch control. Um, so you know um, it, it'll, it'll look after you if you if you're in that kind of uh, way. You know at the lights. Um, but one thing that I I mean I went and bought it from down south in London. I travelled all the way back up to the northwest. And uh, let me tell you one thing, because it's, it's naked, it's got absolutely zero um, uh, wind protection, no windscreen, anything like that, so you kind of expected it. But on the motorway, you're doing long miles, um, that wind batters you and it fatigues you, you do get tired, and then you might find yourself being like, ah, I need to have a break. So to be honest, anything over 65 miles an hour for a sustained period can get really tiresome on this bike something to bear in mind if you do plan on going long miles um which you know the bike's not really designed as a tory uh, but um if you did they do sell an optional windscreen which will help if you are planning to do longer miles i'd definitely recommend something like that to assist with that wind protection because it does get a bit annoying fuel um Obviously, you're always supposed to use uh, Shell V Power, you know, high uh, quality fuels. Uh, in terms of like um, how much you'll get at the moment, the UK are going through an absolute fuel ripoff crisis. One pound seventy-five to one pound eighty-five for uh, good quality V Power by Shell, um, and uh, that'll be about twenty-eight pound for a full tank on the Diavel 
which will give you around 220 miles depending on how you're riding it um so that's something to uh, whether that'll bother you or not i don't know other than that you know it's uh it's it's brilliant like you can definitely tell the differences in all the different riding modes all right so the riding modes now you've got touring sport and urban okay obviously i mentioned what they did earlier in the video um but uh, do they actually feel any different and i'll tell you that 100 percent right now they do um uh, the sport mode when you put that thing on, the throttle response is like, it's like, uh, you know, as soon as you pull it, it's a lot more sensitive than the uh, than the touring um, and urban settings, and you can definitely tell the full power of that machine, and you know, um, it will it will bite your hand off if you're not paying attention. So when you need to, when you're on the bike, if you want to have a chill, keep it in touring mode. You're still getting the full power. Um, but it's a lot more manageable. It's not. It's less likely to creep up on you. So um, whereas if you if you if meet that B road and you want to kind of rip it up, then yeah, that's where the sport mode is. Now if this isn't a track bike. It's not really designed for that kind of use. Obviously, you can't take it on the track, and you'll still be able to put it in some good times, 100%. Um, but to be honest, the way. Ducati kind of uh, market this bike is they call it low speed excitement and I do know what they mean by that because this bike feels the best you know um, between that 0 to 60 range I mean the top speed yeah alright it's 170 but you're never going to do that you know all the time <laughs> let's be honest um, but uh, you know it's not about uh, that whole top end speed with this thing you're going to enjoy it most going from 0 to 60 in and out of like B rows you know, maybe around the city or the town you know uh, overtaking people I mean look at this like you know if I was on second gear alright let me slow down I'll chill out so uh, <laughs> you know it, it, the fun you get from just bombing it around between that 0 to 60 range in this bike you know on the uh is 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 something you won't get on other bikes let me tell you that right now it's uh it, it's completely different the way this this engine delivers its power and its character of the the engine is just amazing on these kind of roads you know um you can quickly do some quick overtakes you know uh, it, it's effortless um with this kind of uh engine you know the type of uh um the pulling power it, it delivers in such a short speed uh, a short bit of time is something like any nothing else you'd ride before one thing i have noticed is about these mirrors is they shake a hell of a lot at high speeds now this is actually a uh, ducati thing i think because uh it's just that italian kind of crazy build quality but yeah the uh, they shake really quite a lot at high speed I mean I don't know if you can see the left one but it's not even that high at the minute but yeah when you're especially if you're on like the motorway doing like 60 or something that that mirror shakes a lot now you have to keep tightening it because what they say is like if you move it it loosens the bolt and then um, it shakes a lot so you have to keep like being on top of tightening it to kind of get it to alleviate it but yeah that can be quite annoying as well okay guys so I think I'll just show you how the lighting is at night here so right now I'm using the daytime running light and as you can see this is what it looks like um, if you want to see what it looks like with the headlight on so press this button and then this button this light here that shows the daytime running light if I press this then now it's showing dip beam so as you can see it does actually do a really good job of illuminating the whole street and um, that's what the dip beam looks like I'm not sure how well it'll turn up on camera um, but that's what the dip beam looks like and then if you want it on full beam flick it forward and there you go as you can see it throws that light all the way to the end of the street it does a really good job so the LED headlight you'll have no problems riding at night and seeing where you're going so I think that pretty much wraps it up guys um, if you like my review of the bike or you have any further questions please let us know I am going to be doing more uh, vlogs on this bike um, you know telling you a bit more about it and some experiences of it um, but yeah if there's anything else you want me to cover drop us a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one